Hey guys, it's Arlene. I wanted to show you all a quick tutorial on how I make my flowers. Now Jade has a video out on how to make these. Um, I'll show you a, a few other different techniques that I use to get the flowers to look like this. But before I do that, okay, I'm insane. It's like 1.30 in the morning on a Friday, well, Saturday morning, and I'm putting a tutorial together. But the reason I'm up is because my husband went and picked me up the new Twilight New Moon DVD. I'm so super excited, you guys. And this is a Borders exclusive. So it, um, I already opened it because I was just way excited. Um, it comes with a pretty cool medallion. It's kind of funny. Look at that. Isn't that cute? It comes with a little medallion. I was hoping to get the, um, the DVD that comes with the iPod, um, not the iPod, the iTunes upload version because I got that with the Twilight movie. But anyways, let me go ahead and get started on the tutorial. The materials that you'll need to make this um, particular flower, and here's just some samples of ones that I've made, and I have them posted on my blog as well, so you can check them out there. And um, I use different center pieces on them, just depending on um, what I'm in the mood for on the center pieces and with the laces and stuff. So, But you'll need some thread, some beading, um, and that's if you're going to be using um, multiple beads. I like to tie them together to keep them secure. You'll need some fabric and um, thick satin is preferable. Um, you probably don't want to get like the stretchy or the sheer um, type of satin because it tends to burn too fast. And then um, feathers and um, like I said ribbon or um, bling. I just got a whole bunch of sequins in different colors and you can actually also use these and incorporate them into your flowers like this. Okay, and um, so I'm going to go ahead and start and I'm going to be putting together the green flower. So the green material looks like that. And what I do, I'm sorry, you're also going to need some scissors and you're going to need a lighter. And I use the barbecue lighter because I don't like to get burned. And you're also going to need um, the Sizzix Circles number 2 die. You don't really need the die, but I like to use it just because it's easy. And if you put two shims under your die, it cuts right through the fabric fine and does nothing gets stuck or anything. So it's really cool. Um, so I use that, and um, believe it or not, I only use four sizes of circles, but I get that many layers. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start from the bottom. And um, what you want to do um, to make sure you don't burn yourself is make sure you hold the flower at the center and you're going to turn as you have your um, flame going, okay? And this is going to be the, the bottom piece, so I don't want to curl it too much. I just want to sort of burn the edges a little bit because the, um, the fabric's going to naturally want to curl. And hopefully I can get this tutorial up. And of course, my flame is dying here. Okay, so we want it to curl just a little bit, but not too much. Okay, you guys can see that curling? Hopefully you can see that curling. Okay, so that's all I want to do with that piece. Now with the next piece that's the same size, I want to go ahead and make this puppy curl a lot. And be careful not to burn the fabric, because as, you, um, as you're um, putting the flame on it, it's going to want to um, burn a little bit. But if you see as I turn it, it's curling inward. And the reason why it's curling inward is because I have the flame a little bit at an angle. It's not this way or down this way, but it's sort of like at an angle um, pointing up, so it causes it to curl inward. Okay? And um, you want to make sure that this piece is really curly because you want it to sit within the other one, which is the same size. You guys, can, see, can you guys see that? See how it's different sizes? Okay, so that's basically what I do with all of these. So I'm just going to go through these really fast. Okay, so once you have your last layer, you just want to kind of take a look at it and see how all the layers sit. And you know what? That's actually perfect. Okay, so can you guys see that? I'm a little bit off frame. So everything just sits perfectly. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your lace, and this is the lace that I'm using, okay, and I want to actually glimmer mist it. So I'm going to get my glimmer mist box out, and I'm going to glimmer mist it with some olive vine glimmer mist. 
and I like to heat set just to um, speed things up here but you have to be very careful because the lace will burn so keep your heat gun moving and you don't need to dry it for too long See, that's pretty much it. And then what you want to do is you want to take a chipboard circle, and I actually cut this out um, also using the same Sizzix die, and it's this one right here. If you guys can um, see this, you're just going to go ahead and dab it with a little spot of glue and lay the lace down. Sorry, it was a little crooked. And I don't use my finger. I push down with the tip of my gun so I don't burn myself. Okay. And then, oh, I probably should have this ready, but you're going to need feathers. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of different feathers, and let's see which ones are we going to use. So you can trim these up a little bit too, because sometimes the feathers are too long and too big for the, uh, for the project. So here's a perfect one. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I'm in frame. I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down. Okay, you're gonna glue it down just like that. And then I'm gonna put some other feathers on here. So I have all different types of feathers here. I think I'm gonna use these ones. And I picked these up at Joann's. And let's see. Let's use that one. Okay, there we go. They just fell out, so they are the lucky ones that I'm gonna use. And then what I do is I kind of layer them onto the other feather. Just add some glue. Okay, just like that. And instead of using sequence this time, I'm going to use this ribbon trim. So you can mix things up a little bit. You don't have to use sequence. So just put a little bit of glue. You don't have to, have to use pearls either. On some of them, um, I used pearls like this. You can see that? So I am just going to curl this up a little bit. Sort of like that. Okay. And then I am going to start gluing down my flower. And how I do that is just to make sure I get the layers in the right order, I sort of line them up. All right, so you got everything lined up. Okay, you just need a little dab of glue. And you just start layering your fabric petals. Okay, and that's about it, you guys. Okay, so here we go. That's the layered flower. Very pretty, I love it. I'm so addicted to making these, you guys. And plus it's so super easy. Okay, and then what I use is some quilting thread. And I like to use the quilting linen thread because it's thick and, and pretty secure. And I just stick um, three beads on there. And then you're just going to go ahead and tie a knot to get those bound into like a little triangle. You guys can see that? might be too close, like a little triangle. And I use black thread because when you lay it against the flower, you can't see it. If you use like white, you can see it. Okay, so then you just put a little bit of glue. Not too much because it's going to overflow and show. Okay, so there you go. And then what you do is you just take your base and just stick some glue on it. And just line up your petal around the lace to make sure it's centered around the, the circle the circle of lace there. And then you just kind of push it down. Okay. And that's pretty much it, guys. It's just really, it's really super easy. Um, don't be intimidated by the lighter. It's fun. And um, so here you go. Those are my flowers. I hope you guys like it, and thank you for stopping by my channel today. Take care. Bye.